Interviewee, Gareth Banks. Interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Goff. <laughs> How you doing, pal? All right. Very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Good. It's, uh, this is a, a very. This is, this is cool and exciting because it's like completely unexpected. A nice surprise. Nice. Uh, well, addition uh, to the adventure. I rung you up this afternoon. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but um, I want to start putting more and more um, interviews together. And I rung you up this afternoon with the intention of maybe seeing if you can come up next week or the week after oh, yeah. when this would have been primed a little bit better. Is that instead I'm here an hour and a half later? <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half later you turn up on my doorstep, a real headache. Please, call but, me. Uh, no, you're more than welcome anytime. The only problem is, I'm not sure if you like our setting here, but uh, um, we're, losing the ambient, we're losing the ambient light, it's unfortunately. It's location. So, if, if it goes on a bit too much, you'll notice the outside light starts yeah. to drop. And, and then drop it starts to get lighter again as the morning comes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, okay, so for anybody that doesn't know you, who are you? I'm Gareth Danks. I'm a commercial photographer based in South Wales. Um, I do weddings, um, ma mainly commercial, which is my most, my most uh, sort of common uh, income now. But I'm a professional photographer. I have been for about 18, 20 years. And uh, yeah, I love it. Professional photographer. I am. Yeah. So in theory, I don't act like one, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> so in theory, if you obviously say something now, you you're going to say something with authority. Not necessarily, because it's still an art, and uh, people have their own ways of doing it. But I've I've got plenty of experience. I've made a lot of mistakes, so I'm com I am speaking from experience a lot of the time. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, trust me. I think, I think we all have. Yeah. Okay. So weddings. Roughly, how many weddings a year do you shoot? Or oh, now, or oh, five. Five, ten, yeah, probably about between five and ten. Not many. Don't advertise them at all. Um, years ago, when I had my studios, I used to get a lot of people in for a they, they, uh, room like this. Actually, kids would run around and they'd play, and the, the adults would see how I was with people and stuff. I think, oh, we'd love you if you shot our wedding because we love sort of the relaxed attitude. Um, but so years ago, I used to do sort of twenty weddings, thirty weddings, but no, not 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 many at all. And it's a shame, I suppose, because now with weddings, I really enjoy them because of the whole uh, transition into mirrorless, which you're not going to relate to. <laughs> um, I really enjoy shooting weddings now, and I think, um, I, I put, and the smaller cameras as well. I, I, can, I, I would like to get into weddings a lot more. Um, and I think I'm a lot more confident now as well. When I first started doing weddings, I really wasn't that confident with uh, who I was as a photographer and my style and stuff. And I think I was just doing a job, whereas now with wedding photography, I do it and I, I employ my, my style, my stamp, my, uh, my character to it and I, I really enjoy it. It's a very strange art. A lot of people would really be put off by um, the pressures, the face-to-face, -face, yeah. the, 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 the fact that, depending on your style of photography, but more often than not, as a wedding photographer, you're on a stage. Yeah, yeah. I don't find, I've never found wedding photography to be a pressure. I've never done a wedding ever that, uh, without knowing what I was doing. I was professional for five years before I touched a wedding. Um, I know some people that went in it after six months of being professional, but I was literally, I knew exactly what I was doing with the camera. I'd made all the mistakes I was ever gonna make. I'd shot some relatively important events um, and made mistakes on them, but never a wedding. So by the time I started doing weddings, I knew what I was doing. I obviously I still make mistakes along the way, but um, yeah, I was all, I was, weddings for me ne were never, about there was never an issue with nerves because I, I love people. I always enjoy working with people. Um, I love my uh, working with my cameras and stuff. Um, for me, it was um, working with nice people. I think was the difficulty of weddings. I think a lot of the time I, I turned up and the, the people were either overly stressed because they weren't coping too well, things were going wrong. I think for me with weddings, the only worry I had was the what if the bride or the groom or the family were difficult. The venue wasn't very nice, or yeah, just didn't get a very good vibe off the people and. Ultimately, I suppose that's why I shied away from weddings towards the end because sure. because I just found the too many budget weddings that you were trying to cater for. Um, yeah, <laughs> really difficult things to photograph. So, yeah, good. If you got a good wedding, if you got a good bridegroom family at a wedding, it's absolute blast. I really enjoy you've it. You've just done a cracking wedding, haven't you, abroad? Tuscany. Tuscany. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. I've been a wedding photographer for years. I've never been anywhere near Tuscany. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've actually had in the last three years. Um, Quite a lot of inquiries for Venice, um, Santi uh, where's the one in Greece, Santorini, um, and I think it's more and more people getting married abroad. So I've got another couple um, inquiring about getting married abroad as well, and I think if that happens, then that'll be another one to look forward to. But funny enough, the Tuscan wedding was on paper was going to be so easy because it's such a beautiful venue, lovely couple, very very pretty place, 
Um, and for the 15 minutes of nice weather we had, it was. <laughs> but it oh, rained oh, pretty much the whole time. The Welsh weather followed me again. It was, uh, mm. it was just a case of uh, everything was set out beautifully to photograph in this amazing courtyard and have, have the chairs all lined up, nice trellis and stuff at the bottom. And um, yeah, that didn't happen. By the time I went outside to photograph all the guests arriving, um, every, I was like, where is everybody? They're all inside, chucking the chairs inside this like church area because it was just uh, chucking it down. <laughs> Yeah, challenging but fun. If you could make, if you could become rich as a photographer, what genre of photographer or photography would you prefer to become rich doing, shooting? Rich? At? I assume you mean <laughs> in the monetary sense. Well, yeah, they, okay, if, yeah. if you were just going to make money from photography and live a nice life, let's just say a nice life, is it wedding photography? Would that be no. your number one choice? No, I don't think I... To be honest with you, I know it's a bit of a cliche to say, but I never did photography for the money. I always did it because I enjoyed it. And I don't know if you could ever be rich. I used to have a really, really good, um, sort of with my studio, I found that that would have been easy to, to, to be able to develop and branch out and have almost like little franchise, franchise studios. Sure. Um, and that would be a good way of doing it because I, I, I'd love to sort of oversee and work with the kids and work with the families and you know, the happy environment sort of thing. Uh, but certainly not rich. Uh, I've, I've worked for a few rich photographers, but I'm not sure if that's the only way they make that money. <laughs> what about them? Um, obviously, I, I know you through landscape photography and street photography. Let's talk about those genres. What's your favourite? Well, to be honest with you, um, landscape photography is kind of like your happy place. You go there to relax, take it all in. Happy place. Uh, yeah, it's I just, like that. it is. You'd be, come out of your tent if you're wild camping or something and see this view, wait for the, you know, with a coffee, wait for it. And I mean, that makes it less about the photography, I guess, but the camera is the excuse to be there in the first place. Um, landscape photography is something if I could, you know, I didn't need to make any money, but just travel around the world, doing some, taking some amazing vistas and experiencing different cultures, different mountains, that sort of thing, different uh, climates. That would be fantastic. Um, but what I love about the street photography aspect, which I don't know if I find it so much with the landscapes now, is the challenge. I think with landscape photography, if you're in the right place and you've got an amazing view, it, obviously it's, landscape photography is no, by no means easy. But the challenge with street photography, sometimes you can go to a really, really run down city and think, what on earth are you going to do here? Mm. But that challenge and that um, sort of the way it improves your skill and fine tunes your eye and the way you look for light better massively influences your ability to find landscape compositions anyway and to understand light in landscape. Um, so I think I wouldn't have one without the other now. I think they work perfectly together. And um, street photography, though, for me, I, I really do enjoy like today being in the, in the Hull Fest, the Hip Fest in Hull, um, being in a city which, I don't know, if I wasn't into street photography, you'd walk around with your missus or whatever, just window shopping, and they come on, you know, it's the next shop. But having the ability to look at light while, while you're standing outside, a really run down. So it's escapism. It is, but you, you can do it anywhere. And I think with landscape photography, you can come back with some really good images, but you can come back with some rubbish ones, um, thinking, oh, the weather didn't help, or the conditions weren't right, or whatever. Um, I planned it wrong, <laughs> normally the case. <laughs> uh, but with street photography, it doesn't matter if it's night, day, wind, rain, snow, you can always go out and get some uh, really, really good images. And uh, I, I definitely think if anybody hasn't done, if you've never tried street photography, do it, give it a go. It, you won't regret it. It's, uh, it's a, I mean, especially with my commercial and my weddings, I shoot weddings now like it's a street shoot. So I'm always looking, I don't really, it's, my weddings have always been very candid. Um, so I've never really asked the bride to stand by like, a window or anything like that. I've never really done that. But I definitely see light and see the shapes of contrast and the shapes of shadows. Oh, we're so I'm different, doing. you and I. We're so different. Very different, yeah. Never, <laughs> you stand there. No, no, no flash. I always look for it. Yeah, I shoot with a prime and I get, I get everything. I, I literally focus everything around the light, the available light, the shadows, the tones, and uh, as if it's a street shoot. And I think people are not so used to seeing that so when you show them the image of the back of the camera they go that's ridiculous how on earth did you see that you know because they can't see the difference in light and shadow which sure. whereas you you're used to doing it so yeah definitely street photography uh, is something i don't think i'll ever be without isn't isn't photography great though just pretty much in that one paragraph you said that you do you do things so differently to me 
Mm, that's right. That's what makes it the art, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that just fantastic? Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. no, no, Gareth, that's wrong. No, no, that's wrong. But of course, none <laughs> that's of not this like is. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, but of course, none of this is wrong, is it? No, of course it's not. It's just because we work yeah. in a different yeah. way. That's right. You yeah. know, if you were producing rubbish pictures that were all br blurry and out of focus, although I haven't said that. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> then there's the, a ten technical different. aspect. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I, I love that. I think it's yeah. fantastic. It is interesting. Your last, people together. Oh yeah, your last vlog that you did in Tuscany, I thought was was by far one of one of your best, certainly of your street photography. Thank you. Um, and videos, but I want to I want to I'm going to point the finger at you now. Okay. Your street photography is fantastic. Right. But I think you're going down the road of being very creative, which isn't a problem, by the way, in any way, shape or form. But I think you're, you're starting to neglect, which you didn't do on this particular video, you're starting to neglect the true sense, this is only my opinion, of street photography. In other words, things that are generally happening. I mean, you were photographing those people as they were doing mm. all the poses with the, the Leaning mm. Tower of Pisa and stuff like that. And I think that's brilliant because people will look back at that in 20, 30 years time and it's a time piece. Wherefore now, I feel, although you did that, which I highly commend you for, but you're going down the very creative route. Again, I really don't have a problem with that. But if you go out just to be creative, you'll pretty much nearly always come back feeling disappointed. Does that make sense? It does, it does. Uh, but what I, I think because I do so many different genres of photography and I don't have a, a one thing that I'll go out to, I know there's certain um, people I follow on Instagram who they love the consistency of their channel of their feed sorry and every image has that very sort of structured look um, whereas mine is pure chaos every every image is completely different there's no style one minute there's a long exposure next minute it's not it's not even almost recognizable <laughs> um, and I no, think, I'm looking on your Instagram now I can see, it. see exactly what you mean <laughs> so with, the, with again with street photography um, I don't ever go out and think right this time I want to I definitely need to come home with somebody in a doorway or I need to have a candid in your face photograph yeah. it's literally how I feel on the day so if I see something funny happening like today in Hull some of the shots I got it was it was one of them days I was in great company everybody was having a laugh and I instantly just seemed to photograph the things that were funny around me so my, my, my mood for the day affected the photographs I was taking so with um, I know what you're saying and, and, and one of the videos actually um, in fact it's the, the video you're in in Manchester um, where I mentioned that I, I admitted that when I got in uh, a moment where I was looking I was struggling to find composition str struggling to find if there's no light or if, was, if I was just in a rut um, the shots that I was sort of homing into were the easy obvious shots that I've probably taken 20 30 versions of mm -hmm. just in a different city and we all do it yeah of course mm -hmm. and, and, and I, even, I said in that particular video that I'm really gonna force myself to look for something I would never normally take and that sounds almost impossible because you've got your style you've got your own eyes you know what you look for but I did actually manage to do it I managed to come, come back with some quite um, unique shots and I was I, I felt an, a tremendous a sense of achievement because um, that wasn't just going out finding the normal compositions and coming back and thinking oh, how cool are these because you know I'm pretty much doing that in every in every shoot the challenge was to find something that was drastically different if possible um, I didn't actually think it was going to happen because the reason I was in that rut in the first place is because <laughs> I, was lock I was lacking for composition and it was just too busy for me and stuff. But no, it was a, it's a fantastic challenge and uh, yeah, I, th I, I do try and have, I think in a video, if I, if I show people 10 photographs in a video, I wouldn't feel comfortable people watching a video with the same principle in every single photo. Sure. So there's always, for me, has to have at least or three or four different types of photograph in that video that people will relate to. A lot of my friends will relate to the simple, shadow, um, very, very modern, um, minimalistic look. Uh, but some people think, I really don't like that shot. I'd much rather you waited for somebody to be pulling a funny face six inches from the camera, like, you know, and it, you try and do both to try and, you try and, uh, yeah, try and cater for all, really. <laughs> this, um, <laughs> let me do a piece of the camera. Um, I've been out shooting street photography with this man here and I've got to tell you, I've never met anyone so A, confident and B, rude in all my <laughs> life. But if you want to get the shots, I suppose A, you've got to be confident in what you do and B, I suppose to a certain degree you've got to be rude but I think this man, he takes the biscuit when it comes to being rude. Can you remember that guy in the market, like the Chinese market? 
you were taking a picture of him, like almost like a street portrait picture. Okay. And he wasn't looking at you, so you got closer and closer and closer. Did he actually look up? Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't rude. He didn't even see me. <laughs> yeah, but I, if you looked I, up I, and saw you, yeah. you would just bury <laughs> your camera in his face. I thought, oh my God, if I, I see you. I was so rude. No, no, I was uh, ballsy, ballsy. <laughs> ballsy. Not rude. Yeah, no. I've never been rude in my life, I don't think. So, no, uh, no, Ballsy, Maybe. yeah, definitely. I, I think um, I can always say, I can always sort of, Make joke of it if somebody says anything. I'll always make them laugh anyway. So uh, people yeah. person. Yeah, I'm not afraid of somebody saying, "Oh, you know, I'm not afraid of confrontation." I never have been. Yeah. And if somebody is confrontational, I'll just say, "No, mate, delete the picture. Job done." Maybe. Sorry to sorry to, sorry to have, um, bothered you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to be in your face. I don't know. <laughs> sorry to be this close in your personal space. Yeah, it's a good no. nostril shot, though. I like it. <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe rude was, uh, was the wrong word, sorry about yeah. that. What have you learned from the video we did together where we got challenged? Ah, oh, in Cardiff. In Cardiff. Um, what have you learned? Oh, but, uh, well, in the cold light of day yeah, now, yeah. you and I were very vexed yeah. about what happened. Yeah. Um, so for the benefit of those who, who haven't seen the video, Gary and I just hadn't even taken a photo really. We were filming ourselves. Um, literally, literally, yeah, completely just me and you. It wasn't even B-roll. We were filming us, and a security guard came over to us and stopped on what we believed to be a public area. So, uh, uh, very, very much a it was unsettled. We, 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 we don't know whether or not we were in the right or wrong. Hundred percent there because there's no way of finding if we were actually on. It looks like we were on. We were in public space, so I don't think we were in the wrong at all. But yeah. Anyway, um, with that. Basically, and it happened again when we were in Manchester, but it was slightly different then because we were on private property because we drifted off just thinking we'd gone through an archway or something. Um, but what I suppose I've learned is just to be polite, and I think probably off the cuff I responded a bit too confidently, a bit too confrontationally, should I say, um, and I should have been a bit more polite and, uh, and stuff. But I think that was unusual for me to respond like that anyway. I think I would have normally been a bit calmer. But um, I think when you're doing street photography, if you do a bit of research and say, oh, these are the areas I'm going to go to, um, preparation is, is, is key. So if you go there and think, well, okay, I'm going to walk up this street, I'm going to walk up that street, come back down and do a loop or whatever. If anybody comes to you then, you say, well, I'm sorry, mate, I know, my, I know where I am. I'm standing here. This is private. This is public property. You know, you know. I might be looking at your building, but you know. So as long as you know where you are and you've got the confidence to be able to sort of say, if anybody comes up to me, I'll just say this. Um, and obviously, uh, people have sent me a, a piece of paper to print out, just having my camera bag, just to show your, your rights. But as long as you know where you are, as long as you know where you're standing, you can sort of say, no, I'm sorry, mate, you are in the wrong. The law says I can take a photograph here. I am on public property. So. I think just staying calm and a bit more, you know, what we should have done with that security guard actually I didn't think at the time, surely. <laughs> <laughs> nut him, <laughs> I'll just remember what you said. No, no, definitely not nut him. What we should have done though is given him, if you're pulled over by the police for speeding, they've got to prove to you that you're doing X amount of speed or you're in the wrong speed limit or whatever. But as a security guard, we should have said, can you prove that we are on? I know, I know. So that's where we went wrong. I think if anybody says, no, I'm sorry, you're not on public space, you're on private land, well then can you prove it? Because I feel like, and, and, and if they can't prove it, I, I just... Uh... No, the thing is, you're absolutely right, but um, what, what people fail to see, what people didn't see, is when you and I were walking down the street, I mean, when you said we're on private land, just so people know, because I'll leave a link in the description below so people can actually see the video and they, they can see the confrontation that we had, or sort of see the confrontation that we had. Yes. Because what people fail to appreciate is, when you said we're on private land, we didn't climb over a fence and we ended up in somebody's backyard. No, we were literally center, walking yeah. down the street yeah. in Cardiff, yeah. Cardiff High Street, yeah. next to cars and next to people walking. Next to people on scooters doing 40 mile an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's super dangerous. Yeah. But when you and I were minding our own business, walking through a very busy street talking, just to a phone, yeah. um, the guy was following us and watching us mm. over my shoulder because mm. as I was talking to camera and Almost looking at you, like, yeah. I was noticing this guy that was following us in a rather creepy way. Yeah. And that's why, because he didn't approach us, I actually said to him, can I help you, pal? Because mm. he was bothering me. Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. And then he stepped in and said, can I ask you what you were doing? Mm. So that's why I got my goat up straight away. Mm. You know, because... Yeah. Don't, don't. Well, we were mid-filming as well. It was a bit rude, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was rude. There is a definition of rude. For yeah, you. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So you learned basically... What and and as well though the guy that came over to us to you afterwards though when I wasn't there oh, yeah, he was right. really nice yeah so it, it 
we wouldn't want to paint the picture that all security guards are difficult at all. No, no, no. It, it, and most of the time, 90, I mean, all the times I've been out of the, with, with my camera doing street photography, that is the only occasion I've ever had. And it's probably safe to say that's probably not going to happen again for a good, a good length of time. So sure. it's not like it's every other time you go out you're going to get this confrontation. So I would never ever take, uh, advise people take that video if they see it and think, oh, I couldn't deal with that, I'm not going out on my camera to do street photography. It won't happen. No. It's pretty no. much very, very small chance. And if it does happen, literally, you just, as I said, know where you are, know where you're standing and say, if you are on private property, sorry, I didn't realise it was private property. I'll leave. It's simple yeah. as that. Don't be put off. Because that, that happened to us, didn't it? When in we Manchester, were, yeah. In Manchester, yeah. 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 When the guy came up and, and we actually thought, oh, here we go again. Yeah. And we yeah. simply asked him, oh, is this private Same land? Same someone with you. <laughs> <laughs> but we asked, is it, sorry, is this private land? And he said, yes. We said, okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. And we'll then looking around, off. it was obvious because it was a building. It was a uh, business complex, wasn't it? It was obvious when we looked around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and picking that lock. Yeah. And <laughs> kicking those gates open didn't help, did it? <laughs> yeah. I've still got the scarf and that barbed wire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Let me yeah. ask you uh, a quick question. Um, sponsorship. If somebody could sponsor your channel, who would be the number one sponsor for you? Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Ferrari, if you're watching. <laughs> um, no, be realistic. <laughs> as in camera related. Oh, difficult one. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Have you I, had some dealings with Fuji? Um, no, not as such. I mean, Fuji Film, I think, are Sony? aware of. Not d definitely not Sony. No. Okay. Um, I mean, I know Fuji Film well. I know a lot of their ex, ex photographers, and I know, I've spoken to Fuji Film direct. And we have, oh yeah, as you know, they they've given me opportunities to borrow cameras and and stuff if I, if I want to in videos and stuff. Um, um, I think there's a, there's there's quite a, a small amount of YouTube content which is honest and, and literally just not so much about the gear and I think I've done one video or two videos where I've actually spoke directly about the cameras and I think if I'm sponsored by somebody you'll feel ob obligated I suppose to, to, to mention the, the, the brands more and early on in my YouTube channel I, I remember meeting um, somebody in the, the photo show that said oh, I used to watch your um, your videos really really loved them but then I went on to bought a different camera make so I don't watch them anymore and he actually told me that and um, I, I was really quite surprised that, <laughs> and, and then somebody else actually it felt like half an hour later said um, oh yeah I recognize the face but I never watch your, your, your channels because it always said Fujifilm in the title sort of thing so I thought well you know okay I, the, the, the gear doesn't matter really although I do love using my Fujifilm and it does you know to me the gear does matter in the way that I enjoy using that particular camera um, but to, to answer your question, I don't think I could handle, I, I don't know if I'd be able to be myself with, with, unless you know of some really cool, even like Leica, I mean if you're a street photographer, Leica said to you, we'll sponsor your street photography. I don't know, I feel, I feel like now I'd probably have so much pressure on me that Leica are going to be watching this and I need to be up there with that standard, whereas at the minute, sponsorship free, I'm just me and um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think of myself as good enough to be sponsored by any top-end company and I certainly wouldn't want to be sponsored by somebody who wasn't you know if you know what I mean I wouldn't if I was going to be associated with somebody who want to be Fujifilm like that sort of thing yeah. so basically Ferrari if you are watching it's not, <laughs> not interesting <laughs> not interesting I'll drive to every vlog in my Ferrari and I'll film that don't worry <laughs> <laughs> my next vlog's going to be about a Ferrari actually don't believe you it is it seriously don't believe you. it is seriously the chances of that it is yeah seriously um, now well, that is clickbait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's nothing like that. Is that, that, is that that MR2 with a body kit out there? Is <laughs> yeah. that what that is? <laughs> um, I'm a, a massive fan of yours, you know that. YouTube, talk to me about your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. What do you think of YouTube in general? Well, Positives fantastic. and negatives. What well, frustrates you? What do you like about YouTube? What I love, the reason I started my YouTube channel was uh, because my uh, a good friend of mine had a uh, charity, a meningitis charity, and I thought I, if I did do YouTube or something with my photography, I'd be able to sell prints and donate money for, for that. Um, uh, that was, it was kind of a, an incentive to do it. The other reason was if I was out taking photographs, I was dreadful. I used to rush with, with the camera and go back, look at the photograph, think, why didn't I just move it? I thought if I had a YouTube channel, I'd be filming and I have to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Obviously that would force me to slow down and realise, oh, why are you using this filter? Somebody's going to be watching this video and, and potentially say, 
you shouldn't have used that filter. That's the wrong sure. settings. You, you know, so you're already thinking of that that person, the viewer's potential comment. So I straight away realised that you know YouTube was going to be a, a a very very good way of me improving my photography because I mean not that I mean don't please don't do this, but if you would have watched my early videos, they're dreadful and the photography um, was never good enough really for some. Just the early ones. No, they were dreadful. They were still bad, but the first ones were dreadful. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Clearly, you've not watched the early ones. <laughs> so, uh, no, that is fine. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I knew that it was going to help me progress, and the, the pressure of having somebody watch me would make me concentrate more, make me research what I'd done wrong, and the things I knew I was going to learn, and the friends I was going to make, and, and put Wales on the map as well. I, I, I knew that a lot of people would be interested in watching Wales, and watching the places and uh, the opportunities and the coastline that we've got, and uh, I certainly didn't see street photography coming into it at all. That was no. never part of it. That's a, no. it's a new thing. But uh, what I love about YouTube is the community and friends I've uh, I've been, I've managed to meet some amazing people and yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Don't take it. laughs> uh, I've got some awesome friends through YouTube, um, and the people that watch the community that you build and the people. Uh, that watch these videos, they don't realise how important they are. Obviously, you can you know, cliche it right up and say, without them, there is no anything. But to have the feedback that you get from these people and to engage with these people and almost make virtual friends, if you will, sure. uh, you've got opportunities to stay with people anywhere in the world, really, because they're always off offering it. And it's things like that, and it's so encouraging, and um, because it's a nice thing people can watch on TV without any drama or anything like that. People enjoy watching it. You know, you're talking happy things. You're smiling. You're in a beautiful place. You're showing them nice photographs. You know they're going to want to. They're going to enjoy it. You could be the number one vlogger from Wales. Oh, behind Alan. 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 Al, Al, the um, um, Astro. Uh, Astro guy. Alan Wallace. Yeah. You like him, don't you? I, who, I just yeah, the guy's a genius. So yeah, I if you've not seen Alan Wallace's channel, check him out. He's a genius. Yeah. He really is a clever, clever chap. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. I'll put. Uh, I'll put his link in yeah, the comments. He's below a huge as well. influence as well because of the, any astrophotography that I've been able to do is I've got some friends who are really good, um, mainly around the Brecon Beacons, really good at astrophotography, good at planning, and um, they've introduced me to the wild camping thing as well. But Alan, with the knowledge of any astrophotography and a couple of other friends that I've met. Uh, through my YouTube channel as well, because I probably wouldn't have known them without the YouTube thing. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, definitely, I, I, people like yourself and people that I watch on YouTube, uh, it's a massive, massive input to my photography abilities today. No two ways about it. I never say that I've not learned anything myself from YouTube. It's, uh, people like yourself and people and I watch you. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did pick up on that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's what that could be a strap line. Yeah. Wales is number two. Yeah, well, was good. you could take that in a lot of ways, though, couldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you have some fun with that Absolutely, one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the frustrations of YouTube? Um, well, for uh, clickbaity stuff. You and I have spoken off camera quite a few times about this. Let's get. Let's not mix our words here. Let's get straight down to it. Yeah. Clickbaity stuff. Yeah. It's uh, it's frustrating for you. I know that for a fact. Yeah. It's frustrating for me. But when you see the results from clickbait, mm. sometimes it can be very difficult to pull yourself away from it. So a it good is. balanced diet is required. Exactly right, yeah. Well well put. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, clickbait does frustrate me. And I think that the people who are... Uh, this is not just photography now, this is it. Give me literally... seven reasons why you... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll cut that cut out. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I'm glad that was clipping when I was laughing then. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, a bit of a, a, there's a difficulty I suppose in getting a balance and I think as long as people are producing content that's, that's relevant, that's, um, that's engaging, that's you know, light-hearted and fun and whatnot, um, then, um, then yeah, obviously the odd clickbait just to keep the channel growing sort of thing is fine. I mean, I don't do clickbait on my channel and I know, I can see there's a very, very slow incli incline in, um, increase in, uh, in followers, followers and those who do regular clickbait are up through the roof sort of thing. Um, but I think just a balance is fine. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I and like as you say, the difficulty of being a, almost addicted to just seeing, to putting out a video that, that has far less is, 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 is quite upsetting sometimes, but it, you know, as long as you're, you keep your integrity and you're honest, then you know, it's fine. It can, it can be very difficult and very frustrating for people who are fairly new to YouTube 
Um, so new young channels, they start a channel and all of a sudden they're not getting as many views as they think they mm. should get and therefore they get very frustrated. Somebody just comes out with a video, five reasons why I think blah, 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 mm. and he gets 100,000 views. Somebody walks to the top of a very high mountain, camps overnight, mm. freezes their bits off, mm. puts together a fantastic video mm. with brilliant pictures, you know, breathtaking pictures, mm. and they'll get maybe 500, 600 views, you know, for mm. the, 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 the people with new YouTube channels. Mm. That must, that is very frustrating, isn't it? It is Very if you're not doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. If I was only in YouTube just to get the subscribers, then yes, that would be. But I wouldn't be doing them videos. I'd literally be sitting in an office opening boxes, talking about specifications and saying why I don't like this and why you shouldn't buy that, that sort of thing. But if you're, um, if you're doing your YouTube channel, no matter what it is, for the passion, for, for the reason that you're, you're filming, then it, there's no lose situation because you're doing what you want to do. You're doing, and yes, it's all destroying when people, so many people don't watch it in comparison, but you, as long as you can see a tangible difference and why there's a tangible difference. Um, and it's not down to your production or your fact that you're, you know, you're not producing the right quality. Um, then you, you, it's something you have to accept. Those videos are going to get more views. Those titles are going to get more views. You doing honest, just enjoying the product, perhaps it isn't. Um, so yeah, it's just I suppose having balance, just doing balance. Perhaps I need to have a bit more clickbaity content in my, <laughs> my video. The um, thing is, if I, if I look back at, um, I have to make this title really clickbaity now for this video. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth Banks jumps out of a window. We'll do that now. <laughs> um, so what, what, what advice would you give to somebody that's, that's new to YouTube or somebody that maybe isn't doing as well with YouTube as they think they should be? Oh, I don't think I'd like to take that advice myself. <laughs> um, just, I think, just really uh, do it for fun. Yeah, do it for it. fun. Enjoy it. Um, be yourself. Don't ever try and, as, oh, another frustration, I suppose, is people are trying to add fake charisma, fake charm, and they try and be something they're not, and try yeah. to talk like other creators. There's the whole mass produced way of B rolling, then a little bit of an intro, and there's, you know, people, there's clones of each other. And I think being yourself, being unique, um, and I think it will happen. I mean, initially my channel didn't do really do much until I met you. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, just be patient. Don't see anything as being an overnight success because it's not going to be. And like anything in life, it's only worth if it's worth doing. It's worth doing right. And uh, you know, you're not going to go to the top of a, a, C, a CEO of a company overnight. Here. You're going to have to work your way up the ranks. And, and and as well, when you start your YouTube channel, it won't be the way that it, it is 12 months down the line. It will develop. It will you know engineer itself. So. Just be patient and enjoy it. Yeah. Make friends along the way, that's the key to it. I think I enjoyed what you said earlier on as networking, the networking yeah. side. Um, again, part of the reasons why I'm doing video, uh, sorry, uh, interviews like this is because I genuinely want to get to meet the person I'm interviewing uh, because I enjoy the community of photographers. I enjoy the community of, mm. of YouTube. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. It's brought a load of people together. It really has, especially like your, your meetup. Uh, the photo nerds was fantastic because loads of people, YouTubers and just photographers coming together and it's just brilliant. It's, I think there used to be a bit of a click with photographers years ago, whereas people wouldn't share information, wouldn't share tips, wouldn't share locations. Oh, there still is. Yeah, it's not as bad as it was though and it's really I'm not really talking good. about the YouTube community, yeah. I'm just talking oh, about the photography. Yeah, yeah the photography yeah, it is. per se. But yeah. as the graphic, di graphic design side of my industry, yeah. I can phone up any designer and ask how they do something, they're fine. Phone up and ask a photographer where that tree was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No chance. I'll plant my own. Then. <laughs> right, well look, okay, let me ask you a few questions. Of course. I need some answers. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I am. Right, yeah. let's go. Rich or popular? Popular. Black and white or colour? Black and white. Photoshop or Lightroom? Lightroom. Or I put or on there just in case there was another. Well, it's one. both, yeah, it is both. No, no, in case there was another Oh I see what you mean, yeah, Lightroom. And no, in case there was another type no. of affinity software. or something like that. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. okay. Photoshop or Lightroom? Lightroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Landscape photography or street photography? Landscape photography. Sony or Fujifilm? Fujifilm. That's an easy question. Okay. Digital or film? That's not a di an easy question. Digital. Oh, I hate myself for saying that. <laughs> Vistas or intimate? Definitely intimate. Yeah. <laughs> still talking about photography now. <laughs> Don't know where to go with that one. Perfect. I love your honesty. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I can no. talk. Okay. Just before we finish, then let's finish on a positive note. Yeah. 
Oh no, that was positive. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's finish this interview uh, on a positive then. Um, yeah. Where are you going to be in twelve months' time? Where's Gareth? Thanks. You're going to sit here in twelve months' time and tell me about the last twelve months. Yeah. So let's skip that. Tell me about the next twelve months now. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm still going to be the same person. I'll never change. Yeah. I'll never That's be. That's a shame. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> a lot of tell me that. <laughs> I get this all the time. Um, I, I never want to change. I always want to be the same person. I uh, always stay humble and kind. Um, I don't, I, I'd like to see myself being a lot better in, in, in pretty much every aspect, but as long as I'm enjoying myself. Um, I'd like to do workshops for street photography and stuff like that. I'd okay. like to do um, a lot more camping, a lot more Scotland, a lot more, more travelling basically. Okay. I, I would definitely say, although I've just had a little boy. Congratulations, <laughs> probably, by the way. Should have said it. Congratulations. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, it's probably the wrong time to be committing to more travelling. <laughs> but no, more, more, more experiences and, and I think I feel like I've wasted a lot. I mean, I was about 30 37 really before I started 36 before I got into landscape photography away from normal photography but I've got a lot of catching up to do a lot of exploring to do a lot of places to see and go and do and uh, yeah perfect that's it that went well thank you very much indeed for your time Gareth <laughs> that's welcome. all I want to say thank you very much indeed oh, for your time no thank you for having me and hopefully people will uh, watch the video and enjoy it and, I'll and laugh all mm. your uh, various <laughs> social media sites below yeah, so people yeah. can go and check you out good no good no thanks for having me cheers mate take care